glass spider had blue eyes almost like a human's. They shed tears at the winter turns. So for Glass Spider, that song took quite a bit of time for me to figure out what the new arrangement was going to be. I had various ideas going on. I did a lot of pre-production on my own at my studio, figuring out, okay, how do I match this content of the song sonically? Or the original version, the 1987 version, it wasn't matching at all for me. Um, and there were things in the track that basically made it seem silly as opposed to serious, or as opposed to um, dark, as you would say. It kind of goes in three stages, actually, for Glass Spider. The opening to Glass Spider is quite dramatic and dark, and that, that kind of goes back to my discussions with David about Eno and the ambient um, records that we were talking about that were mostly in the 70s and early 80s. So when you listen to that intro, it's very reminiscent of that. And then slowly you're getting into a darker world and the sonics start building, and that is really an influence that I took from David and from my discussions with David about Scott Walker, and specifically the album Tilt. And David introduced me to that album. And that album, not many people are that familiar with it, but it's actually truly terrifying. <laughs> There are moments in Glass Spider where you have a hint of that and it's building up. That's really the key, that's the core element to this whole thing, you know. Though you could, you could argue that maybe uh, the, the Glass Spider track is more of a tone poem than a, than, a, than a song, but it does drop into a nice little groove at the end, you know. And then once you get to this kind of third part of the song, you're in a little bit of an electronic, industrial, almost Nine Inch Nails inspired um, mayhem at the end, if that makes sense, yeah. So that would be the, the, the three general in influences that kind of shape that song.